So if we take the test we built earlier and run through a complete test baseline, so we'll, take, we'll select all 24 of these tests, we run through a baseline, we are establishing in Visual Studio the test impacts. So we can see which tests run what code within the project. Now that the test run is completed, we can go and change some of the code because we've established the baseline, and it can calculate in the test impact analysis what code has been modified and which tests should be run because of that. So we're going to go to the get test product here. In this case, it creates a new product, and we're just going to simply add a line of code here that does essentially, essentially nothing. If 1 is equal to 2, then var x equals 10. Now when we build this, when we build this, we can go to the impact test impact analysis view, and we should see the impacted tests, in which case we see the four impacted tests. Now, before I get too far in this, what we want to do is make sure one of the things that, that can happen is that sometimes we forget to turn on this setting. So I'm going to go back to the edit the test settings, and I'm going to open up the local test settings. So this is what we run when we run the, the builds locally. And I'm going to go to the data and diagnostic section. And if we come down here, we will see that test impact has already been turned on and it has been configured to, to uh, collect the data from all the modules, except for certain ones that are uh, set up by Microsoft. So that's why it automatically worked. If you run the test impact and you don't see anything, typically the test impact data and diagnostics have not been set up. But So we see the tests that have been modified. And that means we know to select these tests, and then we can rerun them. As expected, all the tests will completely pass uh, with flying colors. So now that the tests have been rerun, we see that the test impact view has already refreshed and showing that nothing has been impacted. It doesn't know that once a test has successfully passed, it doesn't know that um, it has not needs to be rerun. Every time we make a code change, we will then see that effect in the test impact view. And this is how Visual Studio works as it stores those test results locally. We can refresh the test impact and we'll see that no tests are impacted. We make another code change and we save it and we refresh and we'll see that no tests are impacted again because we haven't built it. So we need to build before we refresh the code to in this case, none of those tests actually touch this code, so they're not impacted. But if I change it to run this code and refresh it, we'll see the tests that are impacted. Now, when we take this to Team Foundation Server and incorporate it in the build process, we should see some. We should see not only the impacted tests from one user, but we have the opportunity of seeing the impacted tests across all the developers who've been making modifications to the system. To turn on the test impact analysis, we're going to go back to the builds. We're going to edit the build pro definition. Okay, so I've reset the test assemblies to a default setting. We need to select a test settings file. Normally, we choose the trace and test impact settings test file, in which case, what we see in that one, if we go look at the solution here, is in that case, the data and diagnostics is already set up for code coverage and test impact. We also need to turn on the test impact here in the uh, build process template under the advanced settings, and it's called it by default is set up to analyze test impacts always. So it's already set up to do this. We simply needed to make sure it was turned on properly. And we'll queue the, the new build definition. And one more thing is I actually need to check in the changes. So let us run the, the build definition without the changes to create a baseline. Okay, now that we've established a baseline, we can go and run a test. We can go check in the code here and see currently no tests are impacted, but we're going to check in these changes and we'll re queue the build up. All right, so we can take a look at the finished product here and we see that the code that we've changed has already been shown up here as impacted tests. So in this case, we know which tests have been modified. And in this case, from a build perspective, we can look at the overall changes by the developers to see as a group what tests should be rerun and, or have the test team rerun to validate that all the code changes together are properly covered through testing.
If we want to take a particular look at the code change, we can also click on a specific change here. We can see which change set and allow us to compare changes and really leverage the features of Team Foundation Server to help bring all this information together.